Today's topic of discussion is anticoagulant drug part 1. Hello and welcome to Pharmacomania. I am Dr. Shahnaz Malay. This is the coagulation cascade uh, which is the enzymatic process in which the one factor is activated another one in the particular fixed sequence. So it is called coagulation cascade. There are three types of the pathway, intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway and common pathway. Intrinsic pathway is called intrinsic because uh, injury is from inside of the blood vessel and endothelial damage causes blood contact in the collagen and damaged blood lamina, a basal lamina and activate platelet and release platelet derived factor which activate the intrinsic pathway. So it activate uh, factor 12 to 12 activating factor 12 activating factor is activate 9 uh, 11 uh, factor 11 and factor 11 activating factor activate factor 9 now this factor 9 activating factor is act on the factor 10 and now extrinsic pathway is called extrinsic because the injury is from the outside of the blood vessel secondary to trauma tissue factor is releases in the blood vessel and this tissue factor is activate the extrinsic pathway and it uh, act on the factor 7 and it activate factor 7 now this factor 7 is act, act on the factor 10 after from this sequence, the common pathway is activated. So, both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway is activating factor 10. So, factor 10A is activated and this act on the prothrombin and prothrombin convert into thrombin. And now thrombin is act on the fibrinogen and fibrinogen act, uh, uh, act on the uh, fibrinogen convert into fibrin and it is the insoluble fibrin. Uh, anticoagulant effect is achieved by inhibiting uh, directly as well as indirectly action on the thrombin or factor 10a now classification of anticoagulant drug so there are two type of drugs like parenteral anticoagulant and oral anticoagulant so first of all parenteral anticoagulant are uh, again classified into indirectly thrombin inhibitor and directly thrombin inhibitor so first is the indirectly thrombin inhibitors are heparin as a unfractionated heparin another another drug are uh, low molecular weight heparin, uh, so drugs names are enoxaparin, deltaparin, ardiparin and reviparin. Synthetic heparin derivative are, is fondaparinux and directly thrombin inhibitor are heroin based thrombin inhibitor like lepirudin, bivalirudin, desirudin and ergotrobin. So ergotrobin is the synthetic derivative when lepirudin, bivalirudin and desirudin are natural compound now next group is the oral anticoagulant which are again directly thrombin inhibitor are debigatron and direct factor 10 inhibitor are rivaroxaban and apexaban second is the cumarin derivative which are warfarin acinocumarol and dicumarol now unfractionated heparin it is parenteral anticoagulant and act indirectly thrombin inhibitor it was discovered by the medical student maclean and later on it was isolated and identified by howell as sulfated mucopolysaccharin it is strong electronegative compound and uh, strongest organic acid in the body Commercially, it is available from the ox lung and pig intestinal mucosa. First of all, heparin bind with the antithrombin 3 and this uh, complex uh, heparin and antithrombin uh, bind with the thrombin and then factor 10A, 9A, 11A and 12A. 
and uh, this complex will inactivate all these coagulating factor of intrinsic pathway intrinsic as well as common pathway but not of the extrinsic pathway so heparin bind with the antithrombin 3 factor and uh, through the unique pentasaccharide sequence leading to conformational changes occur so heparin and antithrombin complex bind to the clotting factor of intrinsic and common pathway but not of the extrinsic pathway at the low concentration it inhibit factor 10 mediated conversion of the pro, uh, prothrombin to thrombin this is the unfractionated heparin pentasaccharide sequence which is bind with the antithrombin and this complex will bind with factor 10 as well as thrombin so and it also bind with the other coagulating factors and it inactivate all this coagulating factor and it act as a anticoagulant it also bind with the other coagulating factor like 10a 9a 11a and 12a and these all factor are inactivated by binding with this complex heparin and antithrombin 3 complex and this uh, complex will deactivate this all and uh, all uh, coagulating factor so it act as a uh, anticoagulant by inactivating all this coagulating factor pharmacokinetic of heparin is uh, it is not absorbed from orally because high negative charge and large molecular weight it must be given parenterally uh, intravenously or subcutaneously in intravenous route effects start immediately when subcutaneously it will take time 1 to 2 hour intramuscular route may cause hematomas and heparin is highly protein bound it does not cross blood brain barrier as well as placental barrier so it is safe in pregnancy and it is rapidly inactivated in liver by heparin as enzyme and excreted in urine during heparin therapy activated partial thromboplastin time should be monitored and it must be between 1.5 to 2.5 times adverse effect of heparin are first is the bleeding uh, overdose most uh, serious hemorrhagic bleeding can occur uh, in urine gastrointestinal tract and anywhere anywhere in the body first sign of the uh, bleeding is hematuria and uh, it should stop uh, by uh, whenever first sign is appear heparin uh, therapy required a ptt monitoring and no antagonist is required in the mild bleeding as effect of heparin disappear within an hour but in severe life threatening hemorrhagic condition it can be controlled rapidly by slow iv infusion of the protamin sulfate protamin sulfate is the antagonist of the heparin and it is strongly uh, basic in nature and is rapid neutralize the anticoagulant effect of the heparin protamin sulfate is the strong base and heparin is strong acid so it is the chemical antagonism of the drug so protamin sulfate is specific heparin antagonist obtained from the fish sperm one milligram of the protamin sulfate uh, approximately neutralize the 100 unit of the heparin and it is the chemical antagonism and protamin sulfate itself may cause uh, bleeding it it has weak anticoagulant effect and maximum dose is not more than 50 milligram heparin induced thrombocytopenia it's called hit 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 heparin rarely cause thrombocytopenia it is due to formation of antibody against platelet factor and heparin complex leading to decrease platelet count and thrombotic complication can occur the incidence is higher with unfractionated heparin than low molecular weight heparin heparin should be discontinued in this condition now second is the transient and reversible alopecia red serum red serum transaminase level may rise osteoporosis with long term use of the high dose of the heparin 4 3 2 6 1 hypersensitivity reaction are rare 
and it is contraindication in the hemophilic patient and severe hypertension intracranial hemorrhage bacterial endocarditis active tuberculosis peptic ulcer threatened abortion cirrhosis renal failure in all these condition uh, chances of bleeding is more now therapeutic use of anticoagulants so the main aim of anticoagulant therapy is to prevent formation of intravascular thrombus formation or prevent further extension of already formed clot so it does not break the clot uh, or thrombus once it is formed it is uh, used for the prophylactic treatment for to prevent formation of the intravascular thrombus or clot so in initial phase it should be start with a low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin and continued for the at least 4 to 5 days then maintenance therapy with the oral anticoagulant like warfarin but warfarin should be start with the low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin because the action onset of action of warfarin is delayed so it should be started simultaneously with the heparin and heparin does not cross the blood brain barrier and placental barrier so it is the choice of uh, it is the drug of choice in the pregnancy now deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism venous thrombi are mainly formed in the fibrin network with a long tail that can easily detach and result in embolization of the pulmonary arteries so anticoagulant are used for the treatment and prevention of a thromboembolism for the treatment of venous thrombosis and pulmonary embolism heparin and low molecular weight heparin is administered warfarin is also started simultaneously with the heparin and low molecular weight heparin because uh, action of heparin and low molecular weight heparin is uh, within Uh, rapid action and uh, it should be continued for four to five days till the effect of warfarin is obtained. Low dose of the heparin therapy is administered subcutaneously for the prevention of deep vein thrombosis and thromboembolism. In the patient undergoes major surgeries for requirement of prolonged immobilization. Low molecular weight heparin and fondaparinux are also effective in laboratory. Uh, monitoring is usually not required for the low dose of the heparin regime next is the myocardial infarction uh, anticoagulant like heparin and low molecular weight heparin and fondaparinux are used in patient with a high risk of embolism uh, atrial fibrillation and the prevention of mural thrombus anticoagulant help to prevent recurrent attack of myocardial infarction and stroke especially when the given with combination with low dose with uh, of the aspirin heparin is used during the coronary angioplasty to prevent thrombosis and unstable angina the use of low molecular weight heparin or unfractionated heparin or fondaparinux reduce the occurrence of the mi in these patients atrial fibrillation the patient required prolonged oral anticoagulant therapy to reduce risk of the systemic uh, embolization and stroke disseminated intravascular coagulation heparin may useful in selected cases to decrease the consumption of the clotting factor other uses are anticoagulant are required in the prosthetic heart valve and vascular surgery to prevent the thromboembolism heparin is preferred uh, anticoagulant for the cardiopulmonary bypass surgery as it is highly effective and effect can be neutralized by the protamine sulfate low molecular weight and fondaparinux is not preferred heparin is used uh, in the hemolysis to prevent thrombosis and blood circulate to be continued Thank you for watching the video.